Today we celebrate the 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please stand and join us in singing All Are Welcome, number 318 in your Breaking Bread. Muy bienvenidos todos, tenemos una visitante de Argentina, allá es el invierno, pues casi termina el invierno y pasan a la primavera, aquí el otoño. Bienvenida a nuestra hermana Caucha de Argentina, la tierra del Papa Francisco. Bueno, welcome everyone who's visiting this weekend, uh, anybody who might be new, any guest of one of our family members, I'm Father Carlos Álvarez, pastor. Today is the 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time, and we're offering Mass for the following intention, uh, for the souls of Alfonso and Francis Atencio, and for the soul of Toby L. Romo, from our sister parish and center, who was uh, received sac uh, Christian burial yesterday. We also pray for all the intentions we hold in our hearts, united with the Sacred Heart of Jesus, placed on the sacred altar, as surely as bread and wine are transubstantiated into the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus, we know that God hears and answers our prayers according to His will. And so we continue. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers, my sisters, to prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries, we come before God with humble and contrite hearts. We do acknowledge our sins. We trust in God's infinite mercy.
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. pray almighty ever-living God who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you Pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a suitable partner for him. So the Lord God formed out of the ground various wild animals and various birds of the air. And he brought them to the man to see what he would call them. Wherever the man called each of them would be its name. The man gave names to all the cattle all the birds of the air, and all wild animals. But none proved to be the suitable partner for the man. So the Lord God cast a deep sleep on the man. And while he was asleep, he took out one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. The Lord God then built up into a woman the rib that he had taken from the man. When he brought her to the man, the man said, This one at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of her man this one has been taken. That is why a man leaves his father and mother 
and clings to his wife, and the two become one flesh. The word of the Lord. reading from from the the letter letter of St. Paul to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, he, for a little while, was made lower than the angels, that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting that he, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the leader to their salvation perfect through suffering. He who consecrates and those who are being consecrated all have one origin. Therefore, he is not ashamed to call them brothers. The word of the Lord.
from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The Pharisees approached Jesus and asked, Is it lawful for a husband to divorce his wife? They were testing him. He said to them in reply, What did Moses command you? They replied, Moses permitted a husband to write a bill of divorce and dismiss her. But Jesus told them, Because of the hardness of your hearts, he wrote you this commandment. From the beginning, of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, no human being must separate. In the house, the disciples again questioned Jesus about this. He said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. And the people were bringing children to him that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he became indignant and said to them, let the children come to me. Do not, Do not prevent them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Amen, I say to you, whoever does not accept the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it. Then he embraced them and blessed them, placing his hands on them. The Gospel of the Lord. So my grandmother, Sofia Lopez uh, Rios, had four siblings. Her youngest brother and her mother died when he was born, the fourth born. She was the oldest. And then she had uh, Tio Lorenzo, who was younger than her. And then uh, my Tia Susana, Tia Chana. Uh, I think well, that was the order. I'm not completely sure whether Lorenzo or Susana were second and third, but they were two and three. And so my tia Chana married uh, a man whose last name was Gomez in Mesa, but they never had the blessing of children. They were never blessed with children. And my great aunt Susana, my tia Chana, she uh, suffered from diabetes and so she lost her eyesight and was an amputee below the ankles and so when I met her as a boy she was in a wheelchair and though she couldn't see she could hear she could hear very well and uh, she moved to Colorado from Mesa Arizona in um, 1958 or so uh, yeah, 1958, and uh, I, I tell the story about her first experience of snow, but um, this is a, this is a G-rated <laughs> church. So <laughs> I'll save that for an adult situation. <laughs> anyway, um, but every month or so, she would tell her sister, my grandmother Sofia, she go, "Tenemos que ver los muchachos." We have to go see the boys. So she would come to visit her nephew, my father, my uh, mother, of course. And then the, at that time, uh, there were three living, adorable boys, right? And the, and the most handsome was, was my brother Eugene. And my brother Eugene and his daughter Erica really favor my tia Chana. They have the very same facial features, skin tone and such. And so uh, she just, she really had to love on Gene and give him some TLC because 
my brother and I would ride him like a horse. He was trying to crawl and learn how to walk, and we'd ride him like a horse. So, you know, he he had a lot of uh, barriers to overcome. <laughs> Tia Chana knew that. So I think about that as I reflect on scriptures today. Though she couldn't see physically, uh, she could see spiritually. She knew that she needed to see us and we needed to see her and she needed to love us and we needed to love on her since she never had any children or grandchildren of her own. So, with that in mind, I'd like to share with you a, a letter that we received Friday afternoon. And just as the re- letter to the Hebrew started, so this letter begins. It's beautiful. Brothers and sisters, we are in the month of Respect Life October. Having begun with the Feast of St. Therese of Lisieux, of the Child Jesus, the patroness of our diocese, and the Holy Face of God, I write today on the Feast of St. Francis of Assisi, friend of all God's holy creation and patron saint of Colorado. As your shepherd, I will continue to advise you on a most urgent issue. Uh, The bishop sent a red letter last week. Unfortunately, I had to get it to Father Anthony or Father Damian to be read last week, which is to vote no on Amendment 79 on the upcoming November ballot. Allow me to clarify that as a Catholic nonprofit, we are not permitted to support or oppose political candidates in an election. But we are most definitely allowed to engage and speak on ballot issues that impact our mission. Amendment 79 is one of those ballot issues. Therefore, you will not hear me recommend any political candidate or party. However, nonprofits, including churches, have the right, and as Catholics, we have the duty to speak from the heart and to condemn what will be this tragic and irreversible Amendment 79. We are called to protect life in all its stages and forms, preborn and living, all God's children. Amendment 79 intends to increase the attack on the unborn, their mothers, and the family structure in three ways. It expands Colorado's already most liberal abortion law in the country to be enshrined in the Colorado Constitution a right to unrestricted abortion for all 40 weeks of pregnancy. It eliminates parental notification laws and it allows for taxpayer funding for abortions, which is currently prohibited. Our ballots come out next week. I encourage you to be informed. Go to our diocesan website and read the voter's guide. Check out the Right to Know website a coalition of pro-life groups of Colorado. It will also be helpful to review the U.S. CCB website, Forming Consciences for Faithful Citizenship. Yard signs, palm cards, and door hangers are being produced and will soon be available for distribution. And always, prayer is the key to hope, healing, and compassion as we strive for truth, justice, and life. St. Therese of Lisieux, pray for us. St. Francis of Assisi, pray for us. Our Lady of Guadalupe, Sacred Heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Sincerely yours in Christ, Most Reverend Stephen Berg, Bishop of Pueblo. So the the Gospel message uh, helps us contextualize this very clear instruction exhortation from our bishop. Um, so in the, gospel, in the first reading uh, from Genesis 2, we hear about the one flesh union between one man, one woman for life. And that is the Catholic teaching on marriage. So we know that a, that a sacramental marriage is total, that the, the spouses commit their lives totally to each other, that they're faithful to one another, that no, nothing or no one enters into this sacred union. We know that it's 
entered into freely. You know, we don't believe in shotgun weddings. We believe in the Second Amendment, but no shotgun weddings, okay? And then the third, uh, the fourth principle is that it is fruitful. And this goes back to Genesis 1, the first uh, teaching on creation, when at the end of that creation story, God says, be fruitful and multiply. So, so hopefully those are true in all cases. Not all cases. Like I said, my tia Susana and her husband, Wero, they were never blessed with children. So it happens, unfortunately, sometimes that Catholic couples try, but they are not able to conceive. So Jesus quotes this in the gospel to go back to the foundation and to help the people of God understand that, Mo that Moses uh, allowed divorce, but divorce was never God's plan. God's plan for life was, again, one man, one woman, together for life, the one flesh union. And so that one flesh union is a reflection of the unity of the, of the Most Holy Trinity. It's a reflection of the unity of Jesus and his church. How did Jesus love his church? He laid down his life for this church. And that's the way the spouses should love each other. That's the way they should love their children. And, and the way that we get to that one flesh union, I talked about um, in the holy hour we had for our parents and our children as we kick off religious education today. It was an amazing holy hour. There was only 15 minutes. It was so powerful. You could really feel the spirit of God working as we adored our blessed Lord and he poured out his love and mercy on us. So, so, so what, I, what I said is, think about Holy Thursday. And Holy Thursday and the Paschal Triduum is a whole pattern for our lives. That we come to Jesus in the Eucharist, which we're doing now every Sunday, every Saturday evening perhaps, or every Holy Day of Obligation. Number two, because Jesus began with the Last Supper, the First Eucharist. Secondly, Jesus went into the garden with Peter, James, and John. He invited them to pray with him in silence. So this was his first holy hour in the Christian era. Jesus invited Peter, James, and John to pray with him. Okay? It was late. They were tired. They fell asleep. I can relate to that. <laughs> I've fallen asleep at more than a handful of holy hours. But anyway, the, the point is that was the second step, in silence to pray with Jesus to let Jesus' love and mercy come upon us. And then the third thing that happened was they continued to tell the story of who, what Jesus taught and what Jesus did. And from there came the Gospels and all of the New Testament writings. So that's, that's the pattern for us, to come to Mass every Sunday, every Holy Day of Obligation, to begin a habit or practice of Eucharistic adoration. If you take your bulletin home this weekend, I have a suggested pattern for you as parents, grandparents, godparents, and I hope you'll take that ser invitation very seriously to do the second part. And then to tell the stories of Jesus, to tell the stories of faith around the family dinner table. So I really do encourage that. And, and, and this, this is a great pattern for us, and, and it's wonderful. Uh, yesterday would have been my uncle's 90th birthday, my uncle Placido. He died in uh, November of 2021, but if he were alive, yesterday would have been his 90th birthday. And when he was only 10 years old, his father, my grandfather, Domingo Alvarez, died down in Ciudad Juarez, Mexico. And out of necessity, he had to work for the family. So um, even though he was 10 years old, he was already an experienced and hard worker, so he earned a man's salary even though he was 10 years old. And he took this, this obligation to provide for his mother and his siblings very seriously. Uh, he worked in a pineapple factory, and I love pineapples, but he came home smelling like a pineapple every day. <laughs> Maybe my aunts and uncles and my grandmother got tired of that. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of interesting. But anyway, he, he was a hard worker all of his life. And he, and he, and he made the vow to God and, uh, that he would not marry until his youngest sister, my tia Mary Lou, my tia Licha, was married. And so my dad and mom were married in June 23rd, 1962. My tia Licha and my tia Ramon were married in uh, July of 1963. And my uncle Placido and his uh, fiance, my aunt Rose, then his wife, uh, got married in September of 1963. And I, I've shared this story with you before that when I did my grandmother's funeral on December 26th, 
2004. Um, she was just three days short of 103. Um, I, I looked in that first pew and I saw, you know, uh, my aunt Emma had passed away, but my dad had been married uh, 50 years. My tia Licha had been married 50 years. My tia Placida and my tia Rose had been married 50 years. So that's, that one flesh union in marriage is that template for our one flesh union um, for our children to learn from and for us in faith to grow in faith. So I invite you to take seriously the invitation to build on mass attendance with Eucharistic adoration and take it gradually and slowly. Uh, that's the invitation. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Together, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Para nuestra hermana de Argentina, los de habla español, el día de hoy escuchamos de la unidad el, de entre el hombre y la mujer, tanto en la primera lectura como en el Evangelio. Es una uh, reflexión para que nosotros seamos unidos, no solamente en el santo matrimonio, no solamente con nuestros hijos, sino también con nuestro Dios, por la celebración de la Eucaristía, por adoración del Sacramento Santísimo, y sobre todo compartiendo nuestros encuentros con Jesús en la fe y compartiéndolo cuando estamos reunidos en la mesa, en nuestros hogares, como Papa Francisco dice, el encuentro. Gracias. We now turn to God, our Heavenly Father, so that we will continue to grow and be childlike before Jesus. For the church, the family of all the families of God, let us pray to the Lord. For the family of the human race, let us pray to the Lord. For families broken by divorce or separation, let us pray to the Lord. For the children, born or unborn, in our local community, let us pray to the Lord. For our deceased relatives called to their eternal home, especially Alfonso and Francis Atencio, let us pray to the Lord. We also pray for the soul of Toby L. Romo from our center parish who was buried yesterday. We pray to the Lord. In a moment of silence, we offer our own particular prayers and intentions. Through the sacred heart of Jesus, may God graciously hear us. We pray to the Lord. Lord Heavenly Father, the unity in holy matrimony is the pattern for unity with children 
and with the church so that we can prepare for the glory of heaven. Help us to grow in unity with you through the Eucharist, through Eucharistic adoration, and through telling the stories of faith around our family table at meals. Hear the prayers we voice, those in our hearts, grant them through your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Please join us in singing Seek Ye First, number 446 in your breaking room. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service. Graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder. 
to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord. The fount of all holiness, make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We read this prayer and drink this cup. You name your death, O Lord, until you come again. <laughs> Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring you the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, especially Francis and Alon Alfonso Atencio and Toby L. Romo on day two of the novena praying for his soul. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, Saint Therese of the Child Jesus, patroness of our diocese, Saint Cayetano, patron of all the Theatines, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 I think I shared this with you a few weeks ago. Um, for one man, one woman to enter into holy matrimony, it's taken 10 generations. So 4,094 individuals to say yes to that one flesh union so that our fathers and mothers could come together in holy matrimony for us to be present. Think about that number. Think about 10 generations back. I know four generations. I don't know anything about the fifth generation before me. We know that Jesus is present on the sacred altar of this Eucharistic table. We know that he offers us his body, blood, soul, and divinity so that we can be in communion with him now in grace and be with him forever in the glory of heaven. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The Lord is good to those who hope in Him, to the soul that seeks Him. Behold the Lamb, number 341, in your breaking bread.
Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we're meeting every Wednesday at the Adams State campus from 6 to 7.30. If you have any questions, Teresa Tencio is here and she can help you. If you'd like to help uh, provide food for them, uh, cooking from your own homes, um, there's a sign-up sheet on the back beginning with October 23rd. We won't meet this week because they're on fall break. And then uh, Teresa will host uh, food and faith and activities on the 16th. And then we'll have mass confessions on the 23rd. So you'd like to help with that ministry, if you'd like to cook, or a group of you like to cook, that'd be great. Uh, for Adam Alamosa High School, Alamosa High School, uh, we're there every Thursday during the lunch period in Mr. Tedford's uh, room at the Ag Barn. Ms. Alona Medina is also our sponsor. Thanks, Professor, or Principal Ortega, for allowing us to do that. Uh, and if you'd like to help with that, um, uh, just see me after Mass or look at the sign-up sheet and see how you can help. The sign-up sheets are in the uh, Guadalupe Chapel. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. I forgot to mention that the confirmation class that meets on Sunday begins right after this Mass in the upper room, the cynical, of the Faithful Hall with Christina. Uh, from about now till about one. Please join us in singing. Us, please join us in singing. Lead me, Lord, number seven thirty-nine in your breaking breath. Mm -hmm. 